My name is Winnie Masangane, and I'm a social science community researcher with the Integrated Water Resource Group under the Natural Resource and Environment. My presentation today is going to be on gender and water, the future faces of the future face of women in water management. Basically, the gist of my presentation today is going to be looking at um, issues of water in relation to women, um, how they use water and um, water services in the communities. And this is from a rural background. And um, it's lessons learned, lessons and observations that has been learned from two water projects that have that I've been part of, which is the Water Sustainability Flagship Project and the Water Security Project, both of which have been um, conducted in Greater Sikukune, which is in the Limpopo province. My observations from this project has also helped or informed my study, which is which I'm currently doing right now with the University of Johannesburg. And my topic is Barriers to Women Initiating Change, a case of key water services structures in Sikukuna district. Um, basically, what I'm going to be presenting to you about is um, exploring women's roles in relation to managing water, women's integration in water resources, and the constraints that women face from being active participants in water management structures and decision making. I will highlight innovative activities and catalysts that basically can shift and improve women's positions in society and in water structures. And as a way forward, I will offer alternatives on how, current, on how we can change the current picture of rural women in water management and basically change the current face of women when we look at women in the rural areas. Um, okay. In this picture, what I'm going to be talking about here is that when we look at the African continent, it is actually said that 90% of the responsibility of fetching water is um, the responsibility of women, whereby women is the responsibility of women, whereby women um, fetch domestic water, which is like water for cooking water for washing and water and sorry <laughs> it is said that 90 percent of of women in africa have the responsibility of going to fetch domestic water which is water for cooking um water for washing and water for drinking and then um on top of that women's women and girls spend like six hours a day going to fetch water in, in rivers or um, where the water source is collected and as such this activities or women going to fetch or going to fetch water in the river for six hours um, limits them from doing other activities which is for women finding work outside of the home and for the girls attending school and moreover if girls go to fetch water in in the rural area spending so many hours going to fetch the water um, they tend to not be able to do their homeworks and then furthermore um, while going to fetch this water, they, they walk about six kilometers going to fetch this water and as such get exposed to uh, violence and rape. Unfortunately, this picture that I'm trying to point to you today or try to paint for you today is, is, is evident in some pockets of South Africa, including those two communities where I've been working at, which is Hamanog Village and Louis Fontaine. As such, some of the observations that I have made while working um, in this community is that while the responsibility of women fetching water has been limited to the domestic sphere, men are the ones who are actually seen in structures in the community whereby the men tend to make decisions in relation to water uh, projects and water programs and as such putting men to be the decision makers in the community. However, you know, with the changing times and with the development agenda, um, 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 the status of women has changed and we are we're seeing women taking up leadership positions and being in all sectors of leadership in society. As such, we have legislative frameworks that actually support uh, women in taking up leadership positions and that have actually recognized the importance of women participation in development activities and specifically in water management. For example, we have the Beijing Platform for Action, which actually outlines the concrete, um, um, outlines the con con concrete actions whereby um, 
it wants to it it wants to see women being in power structures as well as being capacitated to take up leadership position and be in leadership decision making structures as such also we have the Duplin principle whereby principle 3 specifically outlines the importance or the important role that women actually play in terms of water provision, water management, and also safekeeping of water. Um, the Duplin principle was actually followed like in 1992 by the UN Conference on the Environment and Development, whereby this conference actually outlined chapter 21 of, um, chapter 18 of Agenda 21, whereby Agenda 21 refers specifically to the empowerment of women and also supporting women to be in decision-making structures as well as to be in leadership positions. We have our very own South African Water Services Act, which actually encourages um, the active participation for all and wanting or proposes a structure that wants to see women in all structures of leadership and managerial position, including political and technical positions. And obviously this is enshrined in our Bill of Rights, um, of chapter two, which calls for the equitable access and control of re resources for everyone. The big question is, why is everyone making a big fuss around women and water? Especially looking at the rural context. Well, it's very important for women to play, um, it's very important to have women in water because women are the one who, pay, who play a, an important role in terms of collection. Why? Because women are the ones who actually know where the local source is located, how dependable the water is, and the, and the quality of the water. As such, women hold the traditional knowledge um, with regards to their local water source. And also, when we look at issues of scarcity, it has been said that South Africa is the 29th driest country in the world, as such, faced with issues of scarcity. And then um, in relation to women and children, women and children are the ones who are mostly affected by water scarcity, um, water droughts, water floods, everywhere in the world, wherever you can go in the world, they're the ones who are in the front line. At the same time, in as much as women are the ones who are affected by this um, environmental um, issues, they are also the ones who hold the general knowledge of knowing the signs that you know this is what we are currently facing or this is what there is climate change happening because of them being the custodians of our natural resources. Water is also a social and economic um, commodity and water has a, an economic benefit. Um, for an example, if women spend like six hours to go and fetch water and then girls not going to school. This actually takes away the economic benefit from women and girls. The challenges that are currently at the local level. And as much as our policy climate, policy environment has made um, notable advancements in terms of integrating water in water resources and management, um, there is still a critical gap in terms of how those policies translate in, in practice and implementation. Why or how? Because these policies actually fail to articulate women's um, lived experiences on the ground in terms of where they are located, in terms of, um, in terms of their problems, and in terms of societal attitudes and cultural attitudes that practically uh, determine women's positions and participation in the public life. Um, as such, this limits women, women's participation and consultation, and women are not seen in leadership positions on the ground or managerial and technical level. Um, when there's a developmental project that is happening in the, um, in the community, it is common that women are not seen as actors in terms of consultation, where should we put the tap in the community, instead they just see them as beneficiaries or target groups. Then how do we move away from the stereotypes and how do we redefine um, women's roles in water management. Basically, we already have an enabling environment, but then now our enabling environment, oh, sorry. We have this enabling environment, but then again, this um, um, enabling environment in terms of policies cannot function very well. Why? Because now there's still barriers that actually inhibit women from participating effectively based on the societal, traditional attitudes that exist in the community. So therefore, it is very important that then we need to be able to tackle those barriers that are actually existing in the community. And how can we do that? We can do that by facilitating dialogue amongst the community members and showing um, dialogue amongst the community members um, and creating an enabling environment whereby 
um, we talk about these issues, what are the issues, how do we solve them, and also recognizing the important roles that both men and female can play, um, both males and females can play in bringing about solutions. Also, it is said that, oh, and also we can empower women um, because we all know that once you empower a woman, you empower a nation. So then um, after creating this enabling environment, it is important that we need to empower these women to take up leadership positions and also train them into leadership positions. But um, in terms of empowerment, we also need to give women information, we need to give them knowledge, and we also need to give them technology. However, we all know or we, we need to be... Um, cognizant of the fact that information alone does not mean informed choices. So after empowering these women, it is very important then that we, we organize these women into different groups whereby we have women in leadership, women in entrepreneurship, women that are going to mentor, and then women in engineering and further um, capacitate them in terms of organizing workshops for them where we're going to train them further on these different groupings that we have placed them in. And making sure that once they're in those groups, they are able to impact whatever spheres that they step into. And um, beyond doing that, it is important then to form different partnerships or to link these women with different organizations um, in terms of um, linking them probably with the CSIR if we have women who are in engineering, engineering or we have put them in, in, in an engineering sector where we're going to be capacitating them. It's important to bring them, or women in science, it's important to bring them at the CSIR to come and experience the science behind and to show that it's possible to have women who can take up engineering positions. One interesting um, thing as an, a commu community um, um, researcher that we did, I think, on Monday, was invite stakeholders, our community stakeholders from um, Louis Fontaine, where we're currently um, in Motetema, which is also in the Sikukune district, where we're currently running an algae project on wastewater treatment works, to the CSIR to come and see the labs behind the science and to experience what we actually take to the community to come and experience it at the CSIR. And furthermore, in terms of forming partnerships with these different groups, to form partnerships with the Department of Water Affairs. Um, just last month, the department had a conference where it was actually saying that it has an inter incubator program for women, where then those women that we have divided into different groups, if they're in entrepreneurship, we can actually link them up to that program where they can be empowered for three years and um, um, where they can be empowered. Furthermore, it's important then when we, we make decisions around water projects in the community that we incorporate all stakeholders as we all know that um, if you incorporate um, all stakeholders, stakeholders are part of the solution. It is um, a way forward towards sustainable development. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say here is that the key going forward here is working towards creating conditions in which women can move from their status of being victims of water challenges and transform them to becoming agents of change and erasing the picture of a woman with a bucket on the head. And then how, do we, how, how can that be done? Um, because now we have empowered these different women, now um, we, we won't be able to see the picture of a woman just carrying water in relation to water management. Um, but instead, we'll see more women being empowered to leadership positions. For an example, if there's a water committee or we need to, check, um, to choose a chairperson of a water committee, because now we've empowered this woman to be in different groups and to support each other, um, when, when there's voting in terms of who's going to be the water committee, then women can actually vote for each other into that positions. Also, to have women in technical and managerial positions, whereby women are going to be the ones who are going to be um, designing and creating their own water schemes and also further managing those water schemes or those water projects. And also in terms of entrepreneurship projects, it's very important that if we if we're going to empower those women in entrepreneurship projects, that if there's a con if there's a tender in the community, we need to see more women taking up those tender um, opportunities in the community for um, designing water projects and um, and being the consultants to do that work. Um, and also women being water stewards. Um, lastly, it's important that we capture girls while they're still at school. How? 
um, most of the time women are not seen in these leadership positions because from a young age we've been socialized that the place of a woman is at home and we can't be in leadership position. So it's important that we capture those young girls at a young age whereby we basically encourage them to take up leadership positions, we encourage them to take up subjects such as engineering um, and science subjects that are basically conserved to be done by, by the boy child. And furthermore, it's important that while doing that with the girl child, we provide mentorship programs. And luckily at the CSIR, we have initiatives like bring the girl child to work. So it's important that while we, 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 while we do this, we groom the young girl at a young age to actually be able to take the baton from the older generation woman. And as such, also mentor um, with the women who are actually going to be mentoring these girls that um, they are the ones who shift the knowledge to them. Um, yeah, this is the end of my presentation. Basically, this presentation on what I've just presented to um, you colleagues is just the scoping and preliminary exercise that actually influences my proposal, which I've just recently submitted at the University of Johannesburg. But it's just basically based on the experiences that I've learned working in water projects with my group. Thank you. Thank you, Winita.